Hey, this is Samantha here from RecipeThis.com and the voice behind the popular kitchen gadgets podcast, Magic with Gadgets. Today I want to show you how to use some of your prime rib leftovers to make a delicious instant pot prime rib soup. Well, before we dive into this recipe, I just wanted to suggest that you head over to RecipeThis.com. We've got more than 1,200 kitchen gadget recipes, including recipes for the air fryer, instant pot, slow cooker, soup maker, bread maker, microwave, ninja foodie, and many others. We also have a free weekly newsletter, which you can find on the homepage of RecipeThis.com, or you can find it on RecipeThis.com forward slash newsletter. And there you can get our best kitchen gadget recipes sent to your inbox every Friday morning. Um, whilst we're using prime rib leftovers for this, this can be done with any roast beef leftovers. Maybe you've made our instant pot frozen pot roast, or maybe you've done a roast beef in the air fryer and you've got some leftovers that you need to use up, then this is perfect for it. So you could actually call it your leftover roast beef soup. And also we're using a Mexican inspiration in this recipe to mix it up and make it a bit more interesting. So not only have we got leftover prime rib, but we've also got um, some salsa. Uh, we've got some tin tomatoes. We've got some coriander seasoning, which is colantro to, to many. And best of all, we've got some taco seasoning. And then for veggies, we're using some small potatoes, chopped tomatoes, courgette, or as you might call it, zucchini, carrots, and some onion. So a very simple mix of ingredients. And then towards the end of cooking, we'll also be adding in some frozen corn and also some frozen peas. Oh, and also before I forget, we're also including some black beans in this recipe as well. So it's going to be a lovely mix of ingredients. It's going to be very filling and it'll also be perfect for the freezer if you want to save your leftovers. So to start with, onion into the instant pot and instant pot on saute. I'm using red onion here, but you could mix and match this for whatever you've got, red, white, brown, it really doesn't matter. And then also you'll need some extra virgin olive oil. And you just wanna wait until it starts to sizzle and then you can start mixing your onions. And then whilst we do that, let me talk about some of the other ingredients. The tomatoes, for example, the reason why we use sliced tomatoes is it also deglazes the instant pot from the liquid from the tomatoes. And also, we've got loads of prime rib left over. We're not going to be using all of it in this soup. So whatever leftovers you've got available, then use it. And you could also swap this recipe for another meat, say in case you wanted to do a lamb version, then you could do that. Do the same with some leftover turkey, it's totally up to you. It's just waiting on the instant pot. Right, now the instant pot's warmed up. Give the onion a quick saute. If any big chunks are stuck together, just give it a quick bash with your wooden spoon and wait until it's softened a bit. Right, so now the onions have softened a little bit. What I recommend you do now is you throw in your tomatoes. And then you want to keep stirring them because you want the juice out from the tomatoes. Make the instant pot all flavoursome and just it at the same time. You don't want any issues with the instant pot failing to go to pressure. So, pan of tin tomatoes in now. So as you can see, the steam is just starting to go now. And then, my favourite bit, the salsa. 
don't normally use this one uh this is the doritos one but um they were out of stock of the cheaper one that i normally buy so oh i mean why is it a pot of jars right so what we do this is what makes it a bit interesting with the amount of liquid you need for it to go to pressure so what we've done is we've emptied one of these jars into the instant pot and as you can see you always end up with those little bits around the side that don't quite come out so what we do is we refill we refill the jar of salsa to its top fill up and we do that twice and then on the second time what i also recommend you do grab your lid give it a quick shake and it'll get rid of any of the last bits that are stuck and then you've got a good portion of salsa but you've also got enough liquid to help it go to pressure so now you can give it its final scraping at the bottom it's essential you do this because otherwise a bit of onion that's been stuck to the bottom or a bit of oil could end up stopping it from going to pressure Bring any veggies you're using so like i mentioned we've got carrots and courgettes going on here you could even include some sweet potatoes if you wanted to or let's say it's just after christmas and you've got loads of vegetables that you bought and you didn't quite get through them all then this would be a good time to use those as well and then quarter your potatoes or you can do it into bigger portions if you've got bigger tomatoes bigger potatoes and the last bit of potato going in and then once you've done this you want to be adding in some of your meat you can kind of break it up into pieces like that's one of my slices that I've just half then and then just go with what you've got you can use as little or as much as you want you could do it as a big clear out but you know a lot of us are feeding a family, so we might not have that much left. You could also follow this recipe and use beef bones as your base. Totally up to you what you've got. So I'm just using a good mix here. It's also a good opportunity for when your kids say, Ooh, that bit of meat's got too much fat on it. Oh, that bit of meat's burnt. They can't see it when it's all mixed in in the soup. Right, and then black beans. I'm keeping the liquid in these so they've got extra liquid for the soup. So of course, in a lot of recipes, I do drain them. And then for seasoning, coriander that I mentioned. You want in some salt and pepper. And last but not least, the taco seasoning. I'm not using all of it here because this is quite a big container, but just enough to season it. So there's still about half left in there for another recipe. Or if you want it spicier, then you can add all of it in. And then you just want to give it a good stir. So it's nice, flavoursome pot. And then, like I mentioned later on, we can just add in um, the corn and the peas. So they don't need to cook, so. Can you scrape any bits that are stuck down the edges? And then now, it's ready to be pressure cooked. So put the lid on your instant pot. And then you're looking for the pressure cook button and you're looking for seven minutes. And then press start and then we'll come back to you once it's finished pressure cooking so the soup's finished now so i press cancel and now let's release the remaining pressure right it's finished releasing its pressure so grab your lid off and apologies for the excessive steam but, but that's what happens after you've been instant potting and wow, we've got a lovely bowl of soup there. So now, let's add in some sweet corn. A 
or do you live just or do you live in the US and just call it corn? Right, I'm having a little bit more corn than I normally do because I just love corn in my soup. Oh, I might as well just finish this bag of peas. You know, and you've hardly got any left in your bag. And then we're going to give it a good stir. And what will happen here is the heat from the soup will defrost and warm up the corn and the peas, which is brilliant. Wow, this is lovely. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add in a little bit of Greek yogurt and then this will help make it nice and creamy. And then we just need to leave it to cool down for a little while and then we can load it into bowls and show you what it looks like. Amazing this soup looks. I mean, oh, you can see the amazing pot of it there you've got. I mean, this will feed a good sized family. So if you have a look there, it looks absolutely amazing and is perfect for serving up. And I'm finding that about, I'm finding one and a third ladles makes a really good portion. So if you look at how much is still in there, I'm estimating that it will feed anywhere between six and eight people. It really is a massive pot of soup. And then if you serve it with some crusty bread, such as our air fryer pull apart bread rolls, it would just be perfect. And it'd just be great for, I love on Boxing Day, which is what us Brits call the day after Christmas day, to have a bowl of leftover soup from the day before's food. And then this would be absolutely perfect. A nice Christmas movie on and you're sorted. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the Recipe This family. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook and Pinterest. We also have a weekly newsletter at recipethis.com forward slash newsletter where we share with you our latest kitchen gadget recipes, what we're cooking in the Milner kitchen and so much more. As well as this, we recommend that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and then whenever we have a new video, you will be the first to know. And if you want to know about all our future videos, then I recommend you hit the bell for instant notifications. But even better, we now have a podcast. It's called Magic with Gadgets. Simply search Magic with Gadgets on your favourite podcast player and you'll find us there.